today we are looking for love on Better Together. Whether you're single or married, this conversation is definitely for you. The number one question that we're yeah. getting in churches across the nation, in North America and specifically the globe, is where are all the Christian men? Yeah. So we can yes. ideate about the things that yeah. we want, but there's a huge X factor. Yes. It's important to note that, especially for uh, this next generation of Christian women being raised in following the ways of the Lord, there is a huge missing statistic in the church, and this right. is male, uh, males between the age of 18 to 37. Okay. And um, so we're seeing a huge amount of single women. In fact, the Christian church is comprised of 62% right. females who are more inclined to give, more inclined to serve, more inclined inclined to tithe and are yeah. desperately seeking healthy relationships. Yeah. And so the question is, well, where are these men? Um, sometimes I think a conversation to bring in is, what does it look like to find these men who have walked away from church or don't know the Lord mm -hmm. to bring them in, to get into a relationship with the Lord, invite them to the local church? Here is one thing mm. that statistics are saying. If men are invited, they're more prone to come. Really? They're less inclined to come on their own volition. Wow. Women don't need an invitation. Men need an invitation. Wow. They want to feel as if they are wanted in this space. Wow. And I think that we have done, we as in not around here, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of the narrative that I've heard coming out of the church is there's no more Christian men. They're all right. gone. Yeah. Da, da, da. And we're I think speaking like, that in. We're speaking yeah. that yeah. in. And, and we're not true. honoring the men that are right. there. Right. Like, right. Who, who are they yeah. serving? Who are they yeah. giving? Who right. are the single yeah. men? Right. And what, was, what would it look like to give these men an opportunity and a chance to date? Where have all the good guys gone? There's no longer guys, good guys at church. Uh, there's no longer Christian guys. Those guys are looking for 16 year olds. They wanna rock the cradle. I think there's a lot of lies going on. I wanna come in with some truth. There are amazing men of God out there who are looking for an amazing woman. Uh, and, and my fear is that we are painting a lot of men in a negative light. It's almost like we're speaking that in. So I want us to be very careful with our narrative. For our brothers, for our cousins, for our coworkers, for our sons, and even our future husbands, what would it look like to speak life to them, over them, and for them? Raise up to be the man of God. And you will be surprised at the relationships that are formed and fostered, even through a friendship that might turn into something more. But don't speak negatively about it. Cut through the lies with a sense of truth. These are men anointed and called by God, and we're gonna pray them in. So for me, I lived in New York City when I met my husband. And mind you, there's how many billion, six, seven billion yes. people in New York City, yeah. right? Or a million people, there's a bunch of people there. And so <laughs> I remember <laughs> telling the Lord, my husband's not here. Uh, the word submission means submission, get under the mission. Mm -hmm. Every man doesn't have the same mission. So when you accept That's a good. ring from a man, you're accepting the mission of what God has called them to do. And so I would meet a lot of different guys with a lot of different missions. And I said, I can't get under that. I, you're great. You look great on Christian paper, mm -hmm. but you're not who I'm Christian supposed to do <laughs> yes. life with, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. said, Lord, you have to import my husband. You have to drop him from the sky. He's not here in New York City. I read the, st the stats and I understood those different things, but I knew that God had somebody for me that we're supposed to together go on and do the work of the ministry together. Mm -hmm. And my husband, lit I met him at church and literally he- In New York? In New York, but oh, listen, wow. he lived in Atlanta. Okay. He would fly up for work. He worked at the church. So he would just drop in every week. So I, I think wow. it's so funny that the Lord imported Literally my dropped him in. Right, <laughs> on our very first date, he said, and this is why I love, he was 22 years old. Cornelius said this to me. He said, are you willing to move to Atlanta? Because I'm not gonna move up here to New York City. Oh. I'm not trying to be here. I wanna raise my family down there. And I wow. said, absolutely. I can go down to the really? South okay. on our very first date. Wow. We knew right away. And the thing is, I knew that wow. I didn't need to go find my, my spouse. Right. Mm. I felt like if I get busy about That's doing right. what God wants me to yes. do, I'm yeah, gonna absolutely. Him. He was serving at the church. Yeah. I was serving at the church. Wow. We walked by each other for three years straight, you guys. Oh, wow. Mm. And then literally when we connected, it was so amazing. And I'm like, you've been here for three, but I wasn't ready and neither was he. And not only that, he was 19 and I probably I wouldn't have no, dated no, 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 no. a teenager, <laughs> Baby. four years yeah. old, you know? and I wouldn't have dated if, if I was 23. But I feel like our issue is we're trying to find him. Yeah. We're trying to search. When Adam yeah. went to Eve, That's he said, right. he looked at her and he said, "That's you're my wife. Like right. he was awakened yeah. and saw her. And I feel like we're trying to go to Jimmy John yeah. and so-and-so and wake him up. Look at me, yeah, look no, at me. And we're no. getting frustrated. That's right. Get busy, I believe, That's doing right. the work of what God wants you to do. And I believe that Okay, no, okay, so I'm gonna open up the can of online yeah. dating because we wanna be about busy, about yeah. God's business, which I totally was, mm -hmm. but I was in my church, in my field serving, I was in grad yeah. school serving, I was, I was fully independent, yeah. but I had like a gecko. I was like one eye on Jesus, one eye on the ground, <laughs> who else is running on the side? 
Are you running your race? Yes. Can you keep pace? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And there just wasn't the any, there wasn't anyone. And it was my my twin sister who said, I think you should try online dating. And I said, I think mm. I need to rebuke the devil. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not for me. Right. And uh, so she had set up an online profile for me, and I wept, and I said, if God parted the Red Sea, if God brought Rebecca to Isaac, he can yeah. find someone for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca was in the field, and Ruth was yeah. in the field, and I'm gonna be in my field. Mm -hmm. And my, I, I, what I told my sister was, he could drop someone to my doorstep. Yeah. And she said, well, I hope you like the UPS man. Wow. Cause that's the only people that are coming wow. to your door. I was like, oh God, hey. <laughs> oh goodness, okay. Um, so I you actually had to be open to that. I did, you know I, mean? I did. It it, and you so you were busy serving, and God led you to that. And so, but how, what does it look like? Cause that's not the conversation we're having. Mm. It's like, hey, mm. go to online dating, and you're gonna find find someone. No, don't lose yourself. Set up a boundary. Right. Don't lose your identity. Yeah, don't right. find put all your yeah. hope that you're gonna find your kismet match online. Yeah. But what does it look like to? Maybe put yourself out there. Right. The analogy I give is, is your taxi light on? Because if you're not sparkling, if you're not letting someone know yeah, you're available, yeah. how is someone supposed to know that you're right. available? What does it look right. like yeah. to sparkle? What does it look like to date? Right. What's our boundaries on dating, y'all? Yeah. Jump in. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think about dating? What do you think about online dating? What but do you I think about like matchmaking? Each, I right. feel like each person is specific. For me, I, I said, Lord, I, I didn't want to meet my spouse online. That was my thing. I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't want people with kids. Like, I had boundaries. Mm -hmm. I had a list that I wanted. Was I willing to adjust it? I was. But I feel like my girlfriend met her spouse online. Didn't want to do it. That was the very first person and the only person she went on a date with. That was me. Wow. And then yeah. she got married. I feel like God will use online dating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But some people... You've gone on 55 dates. Yep, on and every app. On every you were swiping app. up, swiping left, swiping, swiping right. You don't even know what you're doing anymore. No, no. I'm just available. Right. right. No, like, no. Is that, are we really led by the Lord? Let's yeah. just be honest. Right. right. Or are you trying to fill a void? Yeah. You know right. What I mean? That's in your life. When Heather had said, are you being led to date online or are you filling a void? I think that she hit the nail right on the head. I am a proponent for putting yourself out there and being. Uh, available, like I mentioned, is your taxi light on? But at the same time, I want to just hone in on what she said because it was so powerful and so true. If you have a God check that you are released in this season to pursue relationships, by all means, do that. But if you are being driven, if you wake up and you check your Tinder, if you wake up and you're swiping right on Bumble, if you wake up and you're waiting, waiting for the ding, ding, ding of a new match on eHarmony, it might be a level of unhealth. You might be desperate and you know what is just so sad is when we allow our 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 desires to be taken hold of um, and our identity changed i think we can find fullness and wholeness not in the arms of someone else but an understanding of who god has created us to be and this is where i will add my green light for online dating you might be able to discover something about yourself and the things that you want when you're willingly to put yourself out there and meet new people Okay, so when I was getting married, there was no online date. Yeah. <laughs> so I come from a totally, so this is my generation talking. My grandmother prayed that I would meet Matthew Crouch. I love wow. that. She wow. watched wait, 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 by his name? Family. She said him by name. Wait. I was Stop. at her house. Yes. TBN had gotten uh, channel 21 in Phoenix. It was the, TBN's second channel in the whole family of networks around the world was channel 51 in Phoenix. And I was 19 years old, and I went to go visit my grandparents. And when Paul and Jan Crouch hosted the program, wow. you took your you know, TV tray into the living room, and you watched and yeah. Paul and Jan host the Praise the Lord program. And we're just sitting there one night, and I'm dating somebody else, and my grandma sits there, and she goes, I'm praying that you meet their son. She said one of their sons is married already, but she said she's got a younger boy. And she said his name is Matthew, and I'm praying that you meet that boy. <gasps> and at the time, my parents had moved from Arizona, where I, I was raised, and took a church in Iowa Whoa. for about four years. So I was living at, in Iowa at the time, and we went down to Tulsa to Papa Hagen's camp meeting. Wow. Gotten in the elevator with Jane Crouch, and she turned and looked at me, and she said, can I ask you how old you are? I'd like for you to meet my son. <gasps> what? Stop it. And I met I Matt. That, yeah, and that, yeah. that matchmaker. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So here, um, so here now I can talk about my grandmother's prayers Beautiful. and how powerful yes. a grandmother's so prayers yes. are. Naomi anointing. And right. right. And to to call in the people that are 
children and our grandchildren meet because how is that ever going to happen? Yes. You know, and, yes. and by the way, I wasn't staying in the hotel that I was at when I saw Jan get in the elevator. Something pushed me in the back and I followed her to the elevator. Wow. Would have never done that on my own. I saw what floor she pushed, and I was just mortified. I pushed the next floor up. I got in the corner going, <laughs> why am I in this elevator? And it was totally against my character. Every, you know, I was totally yeah, like, whatever happened? You were like, I'm Jesus. 19, I'm single. Like, I'm and I looked at my mom, because I was coming up an elevator, and, and Jan walked in front of us, and we got to the top, and, and we were going over here to the mall to the restaurant. And she was going to the elevators of this hotel that I was not staying on. And I looked at my mom and I go, I'll be right back. And my mom says, I've never seen that, that look on your face wow. before or since. Wow. When, when you wow. told me you'd be right back. And something pushed me. And I got in the elevator with Janet and I met Matthew that night. And we got married. When Laurie was talking about how she was paired together, her grandmother saw, you know, and, and she was the one saying, hey, Matt would be great for you. And then Matt's mother, Miss Jan, was like, hey, you would be great for my son. That whole model just really just, it was like neon lights again. And it was so biblical. And I believe that that's the missing ingredient for a lot of us. I believe that was a huge missing ingredient for me and my felt relationships, honestly, is that I did not have the foresight. I didn't have the oversight of someone who knew me and who could see what I couldn't see. But it shows the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's like we can't eliminate the God factor within matchmaking right. and, right. and finding the person that you're supposed to meet up with and God is going to use you. Um, because there's a purpose to the match. Yeah. You know, if you're a makeup artist and you're wanting to find that other significant person, there's a purpose to the match. Mm -hmm. If you're an educator, there's a purpose to the match. If yeah. you're someone who's a university student, there's a purpose to the match. Yeah. It's not just for you so you can have sex unlimited and then, mm -hmm. you know, go on this, you know, hiatus of, you know, being an Instagram couple. You know, that is not the purpose. Right. The purpose is that God has a purpose for you that's significant, that's prominent in the kingdom of God. And this is what God did over your life. It's yeah. because of your grandmother's yeah. prayer. I love what yeah. you said, though, about submitting. Submission. If you look at the word sub, let's separate it. Sub means under. Mission. Mission. So God has called all of us to a certain mission here on this earth. And when, ladies, when you sub, get under the mission, submit to your husband, you're getting under the mission of what God has called your family to do, your legacy to do, generations after you to do. So when a man gets down on his knees, he's saying, will you accept my mission? And then you say, and you say yes, or you say no. And that's what we need more of. I mean, like it's biblical, mm -hmm. like you're saying, you see it with the Naomi and the Ruth. Mm -hmm. You had your grandmother speaking into your life. You know, you had uh, older people saying, this is a good match. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a good pair. We need that yeah. Yeah. because I think in our culture, it's, it's, we feel like we can find them ourselves or we can say yes to those who say that they have found us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and that's not always, we don't always make wise choices. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a position now, I'm like, Lord, you choose them. Yeah, and then right. confirm it among your people. Yeah. Wise counsel, the sisterhood, the brotherhood, let them say, yay, we believe this is a good match. It took me a while to wake up. And I am in a place right now, Lord, where I'm like, Lord, I want your godly counsel. You know, there's safety there as the scripture says. So I'm not trying to pick anybody. I'm letting God do the picking, saying, okay, this is who I have for you. And I want it to be confirmed with godly counsel. And I pray that God would do the same for you, especially as singles. So I'm speaking to my singles right now. I pray that you would yield your life, your, um, I, I wanna say sex life, but I pray that it's a non-sex life until you got a ring on it. You know what I'm talking about? So we as believers in Christ, especially as singles, we're called to shut it down until the Lord says, okay, now it's time till death do you part, then that part is opened up. But that again, that those things should be yielded, that, that uh, the accountability of it to those who are there to give you wise counsel, those who've had success, those who know what the word of God says, and those who are looking out for you. So wise counsel at this stage of my life is everything. You made me think of a story the way that you got introduced with your husband, mm -hmm. um, I thought of a story. And I think if you're if you're married, you know, even if you are single, to especially in ministry, to be 
open to the leading of the Holy Spirit when you're on the road. Yeah. So I was preaching in South Carolina and um, a young woman came to my speaking engagement. And I remember um, I did an altar call and she came up and you know I'm praying over different people, but I was being led by the Lord of who to pray for mm -hmm. and to hear like what was going on in their life. And the Lord said, you know, just don't pray for her. She's kind of up here just for me. So I said, all right, I'm gonna leave that alone. So I go to my book signing and she comes in the line and the Lord said, ask her if she's single. What? And he's like, I have somebody for her. And he showed me my husband's friend. Oh, wow. And so I said to her, I have the perfect man for you. She was like, what? Did not know me. I did not know That's her whatsoever. Wow. And so I said, yeah, I know your husband. And she was like, what? Wow. And I was like, wait, I'm sorry. Are you single? I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I have the Holy Spirit. And she said, yes. I said, I'm signing her book. Wow. The, the book that she, you know, one of my books. So I said, put your email, I'm putting my email address on here. Email me your information. Wow. And so she's like, okay. I said, no, really, I, I know who your husband is. And so she was like, okay. And so so she leaves and then I leave and then I went and saw my husband who was with his one of his friends. And I said, I met your wife today. He's like, no, you didn't. I said, no, I, the Lord made it so clear to me. Do you know four months later they got married? Wow. I'm sorry, four months later they got engaged. Six months later they got married. Wow. wow. So, so yeah. just <laughs> People you can trust. That's real. That's and now I have like yes. seven, at least seven or eight couples that have yeah. gotten married. Godly couples. So just, I did wow. not have that. Yeah. I did yeah. not have that. Being open to yeah. your friends but I that are willing yes. to get married, like yeah. being led by the Holy Spirit yeah. to say, I was not thinking, let me yeah. hook him up. I was there to preach. I'm at the altar, yeah. you know, laying hands. Like I'm, yeah. that wasn't in my mind, but just it sounded crazy to ask her in my book signing, you know, if, hey, are you single? Wow. Do you have yeah. a man? But yeah. just being led by the Lord. I think when you meet a person, you, you don't know yet if you can do life with them. I think we should be led by the Holy Spirit. So when I would meet guys, I would shake their hands and the Holy Spirit would be like, nope, that's not it. First of all, why are you in my thoughts? You know what I mean? But as ladies, we're just ready to go, right? We're, we're at the altar around the corner after we just met him. So I had to slow down with each person that I met to make sure. Um, but it took me time to see with my husband. So when I knew he was God's best for me, it still took time to see if I could do life with him because I didn't know him. It took, it took time and injury. So after about six months, I was sure like when he proposes, I'm saying, yeah, you know, I knew he was God's best, but I need some fruit to back it up. So and that comes with time to see if you can do life with that person. Does that mean you date around to see? No, I think you know what you don't like. You don't like dysfunction. You don't like drama. You don't like craziness. You want somebody that you can enjoy. But the reality is nobody's perfect. So it's just taking life one day at a time. But you know what, let me tell you what I'm looking for. Like, and not just like the description of the man, but the type of relationship. Like I really yeah. want what my mom and dad had. Yeah. I really do. Um, I remember like my parents, they got remarried or they renewed their vows at their 50th, you know, at, my, at our little farm. And then for their 54th anniversary, my um, mom, my, my mom said to my dad, "So, have you planned anything for us to do?" And he said, "Well, yeah. Well, I really would love." And she's thinking like a cruise or to the beach or something. He's like, "I would really like for us to go back to Cincinnati, where we all grew up, and just the two of us. And I would love to go like to a Reds game and to Kings Island amusement park. I'd love to go to you know." Just he started naming all these things that he wanted to do that were kind of like you would do as a teenager. <laughs> and my mom was kind of like, well, okay, like this is not really what I thought. But the Lord put on her heart and he said, um, go agree and to have a good attitude, you yeah. know? And so she thought, okay, this is the man I've loved for 54 years. I'm gonna go hang out with him, you know? And so she decided to do it. They didn't tell anybody where they went. And they made all these little stops, you know? My dad, you know, was walking, you know, he said, you know, I was at the amusement park with your mom and I got a little winded and she would stop and, and she would sit on the bench with me and, and we didn't ride any rides. You know, we just got popcorn and we got our favorite things and we just hung out and saw the shows. And, and he came back and he bragged about how he loved that date, that time with her. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't exactly what she wanted, but because she loved him so, she did what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And it became something special for the both of them. Six months later, my dad went to heaven mm -hmm. to be with the Lord. And that's one of the, like, my mom's favorite dates now. And she said, you know what, I'm so glad that I did not complain. I'm so glad that I didn't insist on doing what I wanted or what would have been super special to me. But that because I cared for him enough, mm -hmm. I, I went to the amusement park and got turkey legs and, you know, all the things like yeah. that. And so for me, I want somebody 
that I can do life with. Yeah. Not just highlights, not just the, you know, I want, of course, the cruises and I travel anyway, but someone to do life, to do the, yeah. the mundane yeah. and to do the, the special, yeah. you know? And so for me, um, the other things are secondary, but, um, but I, want to, I want to date and I want to be dated, but I don't want to date multiple people. When it comes to the men and the women, the men are supposed to chase. They're supposed to be the pursuers. And I believe that's how it's supposed to be yeah. with us, especially as single right. women too. We're not supposed to spend our energy. Trying to get attention. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. If they find us worthy, yeah. then let them run. I think every girl wants to be pursued by the man. I just think that's just normal. Um, I think about God and his love pursuing us. So um, we all want to be chosen. You know, there's some deepened desire down inside of us that we want to be chose every single day. <laughs> I wake up to man and go, choose me today. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a very real thing to be pursued. I'm saying yes and amen to the pursuit. I'm saying yes and amen to the chase. For those that don't know the biblical narrative between <laughs> Ruth and Naomi, she kind of played a yenta. Yeah, and yeah. she sent her daughter-in-law down to the threshing floor. Yeah, hey, yeah. go make yourself available. But it's that wisdom of a friend. And sometimes we wonder, why are we single? What does it look like to ask a friend, yeah. are there some areas in my life that I That's can improve? Good. Absolutely. Because the wisdom Preach. that Naomi gave yes. Ruth was, I mean, this is the Bianca International version, B I V. But she said, <laughs> go wash That's yourself, a, yes, go change up, your clothes, and put on perfume. Absolutely. But what I love is she put it out there and it was okay. his to pursue. The next day, the very next yeah, day, yeah. he is at the corner, uh, at, the, at the city <laughs> gate. Yeah. He yeah. wants to make a deal. He became yeah. shrewd Boaz. Yeah. Right. There's a decision. I want this yeah. woman. Do you want her? Say yes, say no, yeah. but she's mine. And I'll inherit her bitter mother-in-law yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah. I do want yeah. the pursuit. I do want the chase. Absolutely. I also want women to feel empowered to be like, hey, yeah. I'm sensing you might be attracted to me. And I'm he showed interest you. first, but he showed interest in her first. She, she came and laid at his feet, you're right. Mm. But it wasn't that she found somebody and he said, noticed well, I like him. Because a lot of women like, I like him, he looks good, he's on TV, let me go after him. You didn't do that with Matt. Your grandmother saw that. Mm -hmm. You didn't say, oh, I want Matt. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You didn't just pick somebody mm -hmm. and say, you're gonna be mine. Boaz showed favor toward her first. Then she felt comfortable to say, all right, Naomi, I'm gonna do what yeah. you said. I think that there's an active waiting where we say, God, it's your will above my will. It's in your time, not my time. But I'm ready and I'm willing and I'm open. So when you find that perfect person for me, I'm gonna be wait. I'm gonna be right here. I'm gonna do the work on me, so that if you so bring some amazing Boaz to come and swoop me up, I will say yes and amen. Really, at the end of the day, he has us and he has new life for us, and that's what I'm believing because God is good. I'm not who I was in my 20s. My dumb mistakes were all made in my 20s. I didn't make the same mistakes in my 30s, and I didn't make the same mistakes in my 40s. I'm 52 now, you look so it's good, been honey. thank you, yes. thank you. So it's been decades since I've made those dumb mistakes, yeah. and I pray I never make them again. Amen. So you know, so I'm in a place right now where I'm like, Lord then you do it, you yeah. know, I'm submitted to you, I'm yielded to you, and I trust the wisdom of the sisterhood and the brotherhood yeah. to say, yay, nay, red flags, I've known this one for a while, they're good to go. I would love to pray for you who feel like, you know, I've just messed up, and I've messed up again, and again, and again, and is there any hope, you know? Can God forgive me? Can he redeem me? Does he have anything good left for me? You know, I love to pray over you because the answer is yes, he does have something great for you. He can redeem, he can heal, he does forgive. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for my sisters and even for my brothers who might be looking in, Lord. I thank you for those who may feel like they've just missed it, that they've just blown it again, and that they've made too many mistakes for you to have something good for them in the area of a love relationship. Lord, I pray that even in this moment that they would feel your forgiveness and that they would receive it for their lives. I pray that they would experience redemption where you make the, extent, the exchange with them for their failures and you give them something good because you're strong enough to buy them back. You're strong enough to buy back our failures, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray for them. I pray that they would be encouraged. I pray that they would strengthen um, what remains. I pray that they would begin to consume your word, Lord. I, I pray that they would be thirsty for you 
thirsty for you and that they would see that you are satisfying, that you give us exactly what we need, Lord. So Lord, I pray for them. I pray that even in this time that you would bring them the right friend circle, Lord, that they would have the right brothers and sisters to fortify them, to help them walk upright. I pray that they would guard their hearts and that they would yield it only to you and allow you to tell them what to do with that and when to do. So again, Lord, I thank you because you love them. You have a great plan for them. You're not mad at them. You still have a great plan A for them, even though they feel like they've shattered it. Lord, show them that they have not even touched, they have not even scratched the surface on what you want to do and what you're gonna do. So Lord, may we be yielded to you in this moment. May we be yielded to you even in our future because we commit it all to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.